the Tanzanian Prime Minister is now beating the call, as it were, for a single securities exchange for East Africa, effectively joining Uganda and Kenya in this point of view. How large is the momentum for this particular project and how viable is it? Thank you very much, Lerato. Like you point out, yes, um, the, the debate about whether or not our market should come together has been refreshed, if you like, by a recent visit from the Tanzanian Prime Minister to the Nairobi Stock Exchange. But I think to put it in context a little bit, this is an ongoing debate that has been projected really from different angles. We've, we've been talking about East African integration for a long time on a lot of different fronts. Right now we're talking about it in the stock markets, but we've been talking about it in terms of the produce of the region, the labor market in the region, and ensuring that we can benefit from the synergies of a region that's supposed to be quite similar. So we are only now beginning to debate it again on the stock market front, but we've been talking about East African integration for a long time, and we do have a test case for it really in the East African community that existed between 1967 and 1977. So it's an old debate that's getting new momentum, like you say. And I think the important thing to point out, much as it's been brought to the fore again by comments from the Prime Minister of Tanzania, it really has been a Kenyan push for much of the time because there are people who say we stand to benefit the most from an integrated East African region. So there is quite some good momentum. All right, let's talk about this happening within the broader context of consolidating uh, relations within the East African community. A single securities exchange would mean a better monitoring of currency and foreign exchange controls, but can it work outside the context of monetary union? I think the, the important thing to say is it already has begun to work in a very small way, if you like, with a cross-listing of shares. I think that's a good example of the fact that you can begin to make those baby steps before you make the bigger step of monetary and full regul regulatory union. So I think in the examples we already have of a few of our key blue chip counters on the Nairobi Stock Exchange being cross-listed in Kampala and Dar es Salaam, there seems to be at least a case made for the fact that integration can happen um, in small ways before you have achieved full integration. Obviously, there are the risks of arbitrage and the other risks people associate when you don't have a full integration in terms of regulatory um, controls as well as um, monetary union. But I think monetary union, given the history we have of political differences really on the extent of that integration is likely to be a much far further off goal. So I'd say we really need to be able to look at that integration as happening without monetary union. And I think you will find there's a lot that can be done without having a single currency. Okay, staying within the question of uh, a regulatory framework, a streamlined regulatory framework, is also questions of compliance and a common standard to uh, electronic transactions. Now, uh, despite efforts at integration, we know that the East African community members have varying uh, rates of development on this front. How many of the bosses in the region are at par uh, in terms of electronic transactions and compliant with basic standards on transacting? I think, um, to answer your question quickly, um, we aren't at par. None of the markets really is at the same place. But I think the interesting point to bring out is that they are all at different points of development along the same curve. And I think you have Nairobi and the Nairobi Stock Exchange being at the top of that curve. And then you have Uganda following quite closely. And then Dar es Salaam has been left behind a little for the moment. I think why that shouldn't really worry us too much is that um, Uganda and Tanzania have taken the cue from Kenya. And there's been a lot of cooperation in terms of infrastructure development and techno technology advancement that would probably indicate that were we to achieve a little more political goodwill and understanding on where we're trying to go, you would find that Kampala and Dar es Salaam would very quickly be pulled along because by the nature of these things, technology really doesn't take a long time to implement. And once we consolidate our platforms, I think you would find that Uganda, that's not very far behind, and Tanzania, that's a little further behind in terms of, particularly in terms of electronic advancements in trading that Kenya has now instituted with an automated, automated trading system and a central depository system. I think those are things that you, you could implement in those smaller markets quite quickly. So I wouldn't be too worried about the fact that they aren't quite there yet. And in the event of uh, a united exchange, what sort of products are we seeing on offer? Uh, agro derivatives, equities into corporates, especially because we know that within East Africa, um, the greater subscription seems to be on uh, corporate bonds and uh, government sovereign bonds because so many people are interested in the infrastructure drive. 
I think the first thing to mention, I think the greatest byproduct of that integration, if and when it did come, would be a more vibrant market. Before you talk about the different products that you can bring to the market, I think the challenge we have found here in Nairobi is that when you have a market that um, fluctuates in terms of trading volumes and in terms of depth, it is very difficult to introduce new products. And even in Nairobi, if you look at it in isolation, you will find that over the last six, five, six, seven years, you've had relatively few new products. You had several IPOs, but none of the derivatives you talk about that we would have expected to come given the rapid rate of development. So I think the first thing that would happen is that you will find the market trading would be more vibrant, more sustainable, more consistent. Once that happens, I think, yes, you will then find your derivative products, um, and these could be for agriculture, minerals, and some of the other things that we produce within the region would then come to the fore. But I think the first, the first marker will be that more consistent and higher trading volume that we've been looking for that would then be the foundation for the introduction of new products.